Welcome back, today we're going to talk about procedural movement for things like animating grass or different types of foliage inside your game engine. So here we have the Armour 3D example with procedural animation for vegetation. We have different steps from the creation of the mesh to the distribution and the animation. So let's go ahead and create a basic two-faced bush so we can go ahead and bring this up and go into edit mode, duplicate it and rotate it 90 degrees. Now we have a simple, very simple mesh that we can add our image texture to, maybe grass or some other sort of plant like that. We can go ahead and add a basic green for now but later we'll add an image texture. Let's go ahead and start working on the displacement animation. So this will be completely procedural. This effect needs to modify through time, so we need to get access to a timeline. To do that, we can get the shaded data node and set it to uniform and get access to the float value. This lets us type in underscore time, and that gives us a timeline. We can also replace this with an attribute node, which does the exact same thing. Now let's go ahead and get the math node. I got it here, but you can go ahead and just grab math and then select sin if you like. And this allows for some really complicated math stuff that I'm not going to get into because I don't understand it, but essentially it allows you to move forwards and backwards. But right now I've got float and I need to plug it into displacement. So we need to get the displacement node. And this is going to allow us to convert the height of the float value into the displacement. So we can go ahead and play this and you see it moves this in a weird shape forwards and backwards. Not what we want, but it's getting close. Now what we need to do is to target it to say only move the top part and stick the bottom part to the ground. So to do that we need access to the object's geometry. So let's get the geometry node and we need to separate out its position. So let's go ahead and get the separate x, y, z node. And this node allows us to get all the three individual axes, x, y, and z. And the one we're interested in is the z axes. So let's go ahead and get this z axes and plug it into a math node. This time we're going to set that math node to multiply and plug in the z axes, as well as plug in the sin value and plug that value into the height. And now we're going to get a much better result than last time. As you can see, we have some much smoother stuff going on, but it's way too strong. We need to tone that down. So what we can do is we can multiply all of this, this entire thing, by adding a multiply node, setting it to a lower value. So the lower the value, the smaller the speed, the higher the value, the faster the displacement. So now you can see it's a much more dull and controlled displacement. You can make this much slower or much faster depending on which value you're multiplying the whole thing by. Last step now is to use a particle system to spread out this entire object over a terrain. But first of all, let's go ahead and add an image texture because we need this to look proper. Let's go ahead and use this image texture. You can use this node setup to add some modifications to the color using this color ramp. So there's going to be some color variations instead of each object being the exact same image texture. But right now, let's go ahead and add in a particle system. So select the ground you want to distribute these particles on, set the particles to hair, diminish the length and also the segments and the number of particles so you have a good visualization of what these would look like. But we also need to add the object as the particles. So let's select in the render mode the object, our grass, and here you can see it's really small. So set the scale to one and now the rotation is all screw with it. We can mess with the object's rotation to use the object as a comparer, but even then we still have some issues. So let's go to the rotation in the advanced properties and set it to none. And that zeroes out all the rotation and when we play this, you can see we have a pretty good thing going on. Now, there is a little bit of a problem, as you can see here, because it's all uniform. All the movement is in sync. So to add some modification, we need to go ahead to the shader. Let's go ahead and grab the object info node, because we need the object information for each specific object that is instance that is created. So once we have that, we can actually multiply it with a number like 5 or 6 to add some randomness. And then we can add an add node so we can mix the timeline, the underscore time, with our new random math number. And we can also plug that into our, to our existing node tree. So this adds randomness to each individual grass plant. We can also change the scale of the randomness of the particle system to get more realistic looking effects. And also use the color ramp to give a little extra diversity in color to your environment. Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this one. Shout out to Quantum Coda who well, essentially is the author of this tutorial, it wouldn't be here without him. And if anybody else wants to submit their idea, then there'll be a link to a Google Doc in the description. You can go ahead and write down whatever you want, and we'll look into it for the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again someday.